Come on, let's put our hands together tonight. Sing your love. Your love is lighting up the darkness. Fear is scattered and my worry quits. Your strength is rising in my weakness. How could I deserve a love like this? Hello, welcome to our Sunday service. We're glad you're joining us again today. Hello, welcome to our online Sunday service. Come on. Almighty, nothing comes close. My soul is safe within my Savior. There's no other love that's greater. My heart has become your throne. Almighty. Hello, let us continue to meet online through our victory groups and one-to-one -one appointments. We want you to join us, so please send us a message to our Facebook Messenger. Hello Church! 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. na ang time slot natin sa online Sunday service dito sa Facebook. At good news, available na every 6 p.m. sa YouTube ang ating service. Encourage others to join us. Have a good day! Don't forget to join us also every Thursday at 7.14 p.m. for our online prayer meeting. Shout out to the students out there. Come and join us in our online youth service every Friday at 5.30 p.m. But you can also join in as early as 5 p.m. for our pre-show. See you! Nothing can stop us from discipling the next generation leaders. Available po ang ating Kids Church materials and devotionals online. to remind you to set your alarm at 7.14 in the morning and in the evening as we join the global prayer movement called Unite 7.14. And even we want to pray with you, you are welcome to send your personal prayer request through our Facebook Messenger. Thank you. Start your discipleship journey by plugging in into one of our victory groups. We're just one text away. Just message us your name and age, then we will be connecting you to one of our Victory Group leaders. We want to connect more to our frontliners and to the people in need. This is a great chance to minister to them and bring the gospel to our community. If you want to help, Send us Your love is greater. Your love is greater. Here we go. Your ways are high. Your ways are high. Your love is deep. Your love is deeper. Your plans are great. Your plans are great. I'll trust you. Hello! Welcome to Victory Sunday Online Service! Hello! Welcome to our Sunday Service! There's no other love that's greater online through our victory groups and one-to-one -one appointments. We want you to join us, so please 
send us a message through our Facebook Messenger. Hello Church! 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. na ang time slot natin sa online Sunday service dito sa Facebook. At Good News, available na every 6 p.m. sa YouTube ang ating service. Encourage others to join us. Have a good day! Don't forget to join us also every Thursday at 7.14 p.m. for our online prayer meeting. Shout out to the students out there. Come and join us in our online youth service every Friday at 5.30 p.m. But you can also join in as early as 5 p.m. for our pre-show. See you! Nothing can stop us from discipling the next generation leaders. Available po ang ating Kids Church materials and devotionals online. I just want to remind you to set your alarm at 7.14 in the morning and in the evening as we join the global prayer movement called Unite 7.14. And even we want to pray with you. You are welcome to send your personal prayer request through our Facebook Messenger. Thank you. Start your discipleship journey by plugging in into one of our victory groups. We're just one text away. Just message us your name and age, then we will be connecting you to one of our Victory Group leaders. Many of the faithful sa lahat ng mga patuloy nagbibigay support sa ating mga outreach program. We want to connect more to our frontliners and to the people in need. This is a great chance to minister to them and bring the gospel to our community. If you want to help, Send us a
There's nothing that my heart wants more than you You are all I'm after There's nothing that I'm holding back from you You are all I'm after Your mercy is upon us forever Like waves upon the shore And you will go before Let's bless the name of the Lord today
thank you, Lord, for visiting us. Thank you, God, for allowing us to experience your presence and your, your spirit, Lord, over our life. We honor you, God. Let me encourage you in the book of Exodus, in chapter 33, in verse 14. It says, And God replied, and he said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. This is where Moses were encouraged by God when he said that he will go with them to the promised land together with the Israel people and with Moses. And they realized that only with his presence that they can find a true rest. And this is my prayer for each one of us today, that we also can find true rest in the presence of our Almighty as we submit our life to Him and as we continue to obey Him for the rest of our life we will surely experience the rest that comes from Him to the next days to come and even to the next months to come. Can we just bow down our heads and let us pray. Lord, thank you God for this assurance that as we continue to submit our life to you, that as we continue, Lord God, to obey you, you will be with us and your presence will be with us. Just like Moses and the Israelites, when they obeyed you, when they followed you, Lord, you surely promised them that you will be walking with them. And so, Lord, this is what we are holding on to, that as we submit our life to you, you will be with us. As we obey you, you will walk with us through these days, Lord, through the next days to come and months to come. Lord, thank you, God, that your presence is with us and we will experience rest, Lord, that comes from you. Father, thank you, God, for being with us always, for this assurance it proves us that you so much love us and it gives us, Lord, a security that we have a God that who is powerful, a victorious God. And so if you are with us, nothing can be against us. Thank you, Father, for this day. We honor you. We praise you. We give glory to your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Sing your love. Your love is lighting up the darkness. Good day! Thank you for joining us once again here on our online weekend service. We are victory and we exist for two things. We honor God and we make disciples. So when we say we honor God, it simply means that in everything that we do, whether that be in speech, in actions, and in thoughts, we see to it that God is honored. And some of the ways that we make disciples here in Victory at this season, we are connecting with our Victory groups in one-to-one -one appointment through online platforms. So if you want to grow in your relationship with God and you want to be part of Victory groups and one-to-one -one appointments, just send us a message at our Facebook page at Victory RTU and we will connect with you as soon as we receive your message. And since God has called us to go and make disciples of all nations, one of the ways that we can do that is through our giving. But before that, let me encourage you in the book of Psalms, in chapter 54, in verse 6, it says, With a free will offering, I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, O Lord, for it is good. Church, today is another day to give thanks to the Lord for His goodness over our life. He is good yesterday, He is good today, and even for the next days to come, His goodness will never change. Let us give thanks to Him through our giving. Let us worship Him for the, for the things that He is doing over our life. Can we bow down our heads and let us pray. Lord, thank you God that we are here once again to offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and worship to your holy name. God, thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity to just give our tithes and offering so that, Lord, your name will be known to the nations of the world. Lord, use this so that more pastors, more campus missionaries, more long-term missionaries, Lord, and church workers will be sent not only to, the na to this nation, Lord, but even to the nations of the world. We thank you, God, that you are going to use, Lord, this offering lord god so that your goodness will be experienced by more people across the globe lord thank you father for your faithfulness over our life be worshiped and be praised in our giving today in jesus mighty name we pray amen may mga simpleng paraan para makapagbigay online siguraduhin nakapag-sign in ka sa iyong online banking app 
Pagkatapos mag-login, i-click ang Transfer to another bank. Piliin ang Rizal Commercial Banking Corporation. Kumplituhin ang mga iba pang hinihinging impormasyon. Pagkatapos ay maaari nang magsalin sa account number 000-000-9008096167 na may account name na Victory Christian Fellowship of Ordineta Inc. Kung mayroon kang GCash app, maaari mo rin itong gamitin. Kailangan mo lang i-scan ang Victory RTU QR Code. Pagkatapos ay siguraduhin piliin ang Victory Ordineta sa hinihinging lokasyon. Sundan ang confirmation process ng GCash at makakatanggap ka ng mensahe to confirm na iyong transaksyon ay successful. Huwag kakalimutang screenshot ang success message mula sa banko or sa GCash. Isend ito sa aming Facebook Messenger upang ma-acknowledge ang inyong giving. Kung may mga iba pang katanungan or clarifications, huwag mag-atubiling mag-send ng message sa Victory RTU Messenger. Maraming salamat! Let's continue to honor God through our giving! The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me to the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hello. We would like to thank you for joining us once again in our Sunday service. We've been doing these things for the past weeks and we would like to thank you for allowing us to join you in your living rooms. Maraya pong salamat na wini-welcome nyo kami sa inyong mga tahanan upang tayo magkaroon ng uh, sama-sama pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos. We've been going through a series on the book of Psalm in chapter 23. We call it Perspective and we are already on the last installment. For the last three weeks, we talked about the Lord is my shepherd, His provision. The shepherd satisfies his flock. He makes me lie down in green pastures, basically talks about the peace. Whenever and wherever the shepherd is, his flock is at peace. And we last talked about the protection. The shepherd protects his flock from danger. Before we go to that, Pwede ko ba bang tanungin sa inyo? Kung sakali pong matapos ang quarantine, ano po ang inyong gagawin? Alam mo naman natin na, na hindi naman siyempre agad-agad. Pero definitely we look forward na one day we will come together, see each other, and probably, you know, maka, makalabas din tayo. Pero ano yung mga bagay-bagay na gusto niyong gawin? Uh, been scrolling to Facebook, eh may marami nga nagtanong ng ganito. At ang madalas, ang sagot ay mag-go out of town daw sila, visit tayo ng family and friends, at go to their fave resto and order their fave food. Parang maganda yun, ano? Parang ang sarap doon. Nakakamiss naman talaga. When you think about this, naalala ko tuloy yung mga pagkain na gusto ko talagang matikman. At lahat sila nakahilera. And I'm so looking forward that one day that we will come together with our family and friends and dine out. You see, when we go to the book of Psalm in chapter 23, maganda po siguro na makita natin kung ano po ang background ng storya o ng psalm na to. When we read the book of Psalm in chapter 23, the, the initial impression is David wrote this when he was still a shepherd boy, tending his father's flock. As a shepherd, he has the task of protecting and tending his uh, uh, flock and protect them from predators and, and wild animals such as lions and bears. Pero din you know, ang Psalm 23 pala ay naisulat when David was already established as a king. He has been ruling Israel for many years. 
he had sons and daughters and fought countless battles. Reading the Psalms brings comfort and assurance that the Lord, being the shepherd, and the psalm imparts courage and confidence in facing hard times. David wrote this when, he, when one of his sons, Absalom, rebelled against him. Absalom would sit by the gate and wait for people who would bring their concerns before the king. Before these concerns would reach David, Absalom would sympathize with them, talk to them, talk to the, uh, to the dissatisfied and the disgruntled until the concerns becomes an issue. Thus, he wins their heart. So this picture begins to give us an outline where David comes from. As a result, a number of David's men followed Absalom and staged a coup d'etat. An eminent threat of war between David and Absalom, David decided to leave Israel rather than fight his own son. Absalom's men were gaining, but still, David avoided a direct confrontation, not wanting to harm his son. It seemed the psalm was written one sunny day in the field, but it was actually written during a crisis. But you see, notice the sudden shift declaring the Lord is his shepherd, laying down in green pastures and still waters, then the valley of the shadow of death in verse 4. What is interesting in David, he starts with this verse by using the word even though. In verse 4 it reads, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Even though, sa Tagalog, bagamat, kahit na. Even though was a declaration of faith and security in the shepherd. It is like saying, kahit na anong mangyari, kahit na anong pinagdadaanan ko, kahit na gaano kadilim o, o gaano kahirap o gaano kasama, kahit na kamatayan. This I resolved, David said, in my heart not to fear for you are with me. Wala akong kakatakutang kasamaan sapagkat ikaw ay sumasa akin. David's resolve was another perspective of God. Let's look at David's resolve and the role of God's presence. Psalm 23 verses 5 and 6 reads, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Despite of the valley of the shadow of death, David found comfort. His comfort is knowing that his shepherd has not deserted him. Rather, the Lord chose to prepare a favorable place for David. In chapter 23, the first part of verse 5 reads, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. God's presence is a place for His promised provision. Prepare a table means the Lord can and will do everything to provide and what you need when you need it until your soul and your spirit feels satisfied. God's provision is not about material possessions or material things that we need, but the thing that we most needed, His presence. David's perspective was not just to survive the crisis. His view has changed 
and found his satisfaction in God. It was no longer about the presence of his enemies. Now, it is about the presence of God. Stephen Purdy said, and I quote, The presence of God will not always fix your problems, but it will clarify your perspectives. In one occasion, David was into hiding in the desert. Some men who were not Israelites helped and gave supplies for him and his men. This small act of kindness helped clarify his perspective of God. From a good shepherd to a gracious host. The presence of God is seeking his face. Psalm 27 verse 8 it reads, You have said, Seek my face. My heart says to you, Your face, Lord, do I seek. Psalm 105 verse 4 reads, Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His presence continually. We have been battered with the terms or with these le three letters like ECQ, the four letter MECQ, and another GCQ. Madalas natin marinig yan. But today, let's focus on this. I seek you. Magkakatunog, di ba? David saw the benefits in seeking God's face. Things get clearer. His presence leads us to his table, which he has prepared. The table signifies plentiful supply and celebration. Why a table in the presence of my enemies? Have you ever thought of that? Why would God prepare a table in the presence of David's enemies? You see, in the table of God, God silences the enemy. When the enemy, the crisis, the challenges, and the circumstances we face, when it gets overwhelming, the presence of God can defeat it. So when we begin to see this thing, God invites David to his table. Not just to provide material things or food, but to provide courage to provide and make him understand and see the importance of the presence of God. The presence of God defeats the enemy. Amen. When we're invited to the presence of God, when we're invited into his table, we begin to see that indeed the Lord fights for us. Amen. It continues in the second part of verse 5. It reads, you anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. God's presence is a place for His overflowing blessings. Anointing is God choosing to give a blessing. Like the patriarchs, they anoint their children with oil as a sign of approval, favor, and blessing. They would anoint them with oil and speak a blessing to them. The blessing was not usually made for one person alone. Rather, it was made or intended for the next generation to come so that they themselves would benefit. Other generations would benefit. David knew as long as he keeps seeking God's face or being in his presence, his anointing rests on him. When God's presence overflows, His anointing follows. When God's presence overflows, His blessings follows. His overflowing blessings follow. God's presence is a place for blessing. In God's presence, prayer is heard. The whole experience of the, of, the, of the presence of God serves to strengthen our faith and draws us closer and closer to the Father. The Lord's overwhelming blessing is not just a blessing for the moment, 
or even for your, for your uh, current situation, but a blessing for your entire life. Meaning, the blessing of God will follow you and overwhelm you. Amen. Notice, David did not choose to base the faithfulness of God in his present situation. Hindi niya sinabi na, na okay, kasi hindi maganda itong nangyayari sa buhay ko ngayon, siguro iniisip ni Lord na, na mag, kung maging faithful siya sa akin o hindi. It was, not, it was not based on what's happening on the outside. But rather, the faithfulness of God is based on who He is. Good times, minsan naisip natin, good times, may favor ang Lord. Pero kung bad time, medyo mahina, matumal. Hindi po ganun. The faithfulness of God is constant. Amen. Then if it is constant, it would, it would follow, it, would, it is continuous. Then if it is continuous, then the overflowing blessing is non-stop. God's integrity is His word. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 reads, And my God will supply every need, not some need, but every need of yours, according to His riches in glory, in whom? In Christ Jesus. Now the Lord begins to show us that the blessing of God is dependent with our relationship with the Lord. The riches of Christ is, is passed down to us. Is, it is also brought down to us. That's why it would say with, with, with sure confidence and with firm confidence it, re, it reads, And my God will supply it. He will supply it. It's not He might supply, but He will supply every need. God's integrity is His Word. We talked about God's presence is a place for His promised provision. We claim a promised provision. Amen. God's presence is a place for His overwhelming blessing. His blessing is not limited. It is unlimited. It is not far. It is easy to reach. Amen. And Jesus made it easy for us to reach. My third point and last will be God's presence is in pursuit of all people. Psalm 23 verse 6 reads, Surely, Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word follow literally means to pursue. To David, God's presence is the showing of his goodness and his mercy. And he notes and it describes this goodness and mercy that follows is sure. It is totally in contrast to his adversaries or to his enemies. When they all wanted is to dethrone, destroy, and put him to death. That is the pursuit of David's enemies. But the pursuit of God for David was goodness and mercy and, and a promise of entering into his house, entering into, into his presence. The Lord pursues each individual to make his way out of the valley of the shadow of death. He pursues every person that each man is provided a way out of the valley of the shadow of death. He desires that each man, each person, would partake of what was prepared on the table. It is the shepherd's willing act to pursue a lost sheep and a call to bring them to the fold and be fed. 
The presence of God is an invitation to have an intimate encounter with Him. Seeking His face gives us encouragement in times of trouble. Psalm 27 in verse 5 in the NIV reads, For in the day of trouble, He will keep me safe in His dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of His sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Note this scripture. He says, On the day of trouble, I am safe in His dwelling. And He will hide me and give me shelter in His sacred tent. Meaning, even David saw this. That even in the midst of danger, even in the midst of danger, God pursues him so that he will be protected. God pursues him so that he may be able to have an experience of the goodness and the mercy of God. In fact, what David is going through today or, or during that time, it is an evident work of the mercy of God for his life. He could have been dead many years ago, but the Lord kept him. The Lord made it sure that his mercies will follow him and that he will be good for the rest of his life. Because the shepherd pursues, he follows, he runs after, he chases, he searched for, he reached, reaches out. He desires that we would experience how great are His mercies. How good He is. Amen. Madalas pag makita natin to, ma-realize lang natin, ang Panginoon pala ang humahabo sa atin. Hinahabol tayo ng Panginoon para ma-experience natin, madama natin kung gaano siya ka ka kabuti at gaano siya kahabag. Mabigyan tayo ng habag ng Panginoon. He reaches out to us. Isn't that great? Our experiences in life definitely taught us and is teaches, teaching us until today. And there were bad times that caused hurt. Many times we were disappointed. There were a lot of challenges. Challenges to the max. Faith question. Pwede pa to? Nagana ba to? Nakikinig pa ba ang Panginoon sa akin? Prayer unanswered. And then plans fail. But you see, church, it doesn't it doesn't end. It doesn't end there. And must not end there. Hindi pwedeng matapos ng ganon. Hindi pwedeng matapos na talunan tayo, na walang nabago sa atin. Hindi pwedeng matapos itong krisis na to na hindi natin nakikilala ang Panginoon. Hindi pwedeng matapos itong krisis na to na hindi natin nakikita ang kamay ng Panginoon. Hindi pwedeng matapos ang krisis na to na hindi natin nakikita ang laman ng kanyang puso. Hindi pwedeng matapos ang krisis na to na hindi natin nakikilala ang Panginoon ng lubos-lubusan. The scripture tells, He pursues us. And that pursuit is until the last days of our life. Psalm 73, verses 23 to 25, or 26, It reads, Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward, you will receive me to glory. In verse 25, whom have I in heaven but you? There is nothing on earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength 
of my life and my portion forever. The psalmist said, even in the midst of trouble, even in the midst of crisis, even in the midst of a difficult time or an unfavorable circumstance in life, he saw and asked this question, whom have I in heaven but you? He began to realize everything and all things is God, his shepherd. Amen. David, after losing his throne, people rejected him. His son despised him. He always found strength in the Lord his God, his shepherd. He must have realized Despite the ugly situation, he appreciated the pleasant things the Lord did and is doing in his life. The things that the Lord is accomplishing in his life even in the midst of crisis. The events in David's life has forged him to be a man after God's own heart more and more. Day by day, he's being forged into it. A man after God's own heart. We may face the same things, but I would like to encourage us. May we be forged to be a man and a woman of God according to his heart. May we be able to find our strength and enjoy the presence of God that we may be molded into the image of God. Amen. The Lord used circumstances and situations that molded him and thus possessed a character of God. You see, the strength of any true relationship can also be measured in bad times, not only in good. Bad times will eventually lead to good times. Difficulties teaches us dependence on God. Church, we can choose to grow stronger, deeper, and wiser, or weaker, shallow, and foolish. This crisis in David's life made him to be a better man. His perspectives changed. The way he understood God changed a lot. Changed for the better. He may have lost physical possessions, but he gained God. He gained more than what he asked for. Going back to the story, now Absalom's army were weakened, and eventually he was pursued by David's men and he was killed. In fact, it was one of the most painful events in David's life, losing a son. Despite all the things David went through, he must have realized that everything in this world are temporary and God's presence remains to be the only thing that is permanent. David's kingdom was eventually restored back, but the way he led Israel changed dramatically. In his reign as king, he regularly sought God's face. He sought his shepherd's presence until the last day. I could 
just imagine David giving a big sigh of relief and say, And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Such confidence, such confidence was made and established in David's heart. Such confidence in the shepherd. Such trust, a deep trust to his shepherd. Knowing that his shepherd will lead him and will not lead him to harm. His trust was molded, deepened during the dark times of his life. During his crisis mode, it was also this time where his friendship and his relationship with his shepherd was forged stronger and deeper. Saying, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now he looks forward. Now he looks forward to meeting his shepherd. He looks forward to see the Lord who kept him, who kept him safe in his life. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you for building our faith to trust you. You built our faith more and more, even when our faith falters. Thank you for upholding us in times of need. We ask you that you would clear our minds and see you in every circumstance we're in. May we see and feel your presence. And may our perspectives of who you are lead us to a faithful and sincere devotion. We ask you that you would come. Speak to our hearts. Comfort us. Strengthen us. Deepen our faith. Help us to have a fresh view of who you are. If you're here today and you have just joined us on this service, it is not an accident nor a coincidence. But could it be the Good Shepherd calls you to be part of his flock? Having said that, if you would be interested to acknowledge the Good Shepherd to lead you, may I lead you to this short prayer and you may follow me. You can bow your head and say this prayer sincerely. Father, I come to you I've been trying to run my own life, not realizing I've been running away from you. Help me decide to follow you and turn away from my wrongdoing. I acknowledge you sent your son Jesus to seek the lost. I am lost. I acknowledge he suffered and died on the cross for my sake, that I may be given and forgiven from my sins and receive the gift of eternal life and start a new life, beginning today. Thank you, Jesus. I trust you. If you said that prayer, we would like to hear from you. Send us a message in our victory page, Victory Rosales Tayug Ordeneta, 
And we will be glad to hear from you. And we are glad to help you start your new journey in Christ. As we end this service, we'd like to thank you for coming over. We would like to see you next week. Thank you, and may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may His face shine upon you and show you His favor. Thank you for joining us today. Visit our official Facebook page to be updated. See you again next week. I just want to remind you to set your alarm at 7.14 in the morning and in the evening as we join the global prayer movement called Unite 714. And even we want to pray with you. You are welcome to send your personal prayer request through our Facebook Messenger. Thank you. Start your discipleship journey by plugging in into one of our victory groups. We're just one text away. Just message us your name and age, then we will be connecting you to one of our victory group leaders. Do you have friends or families who have no access to the internet? No problem! Just click the link below and download our Sunday service podcast and listen to them offline.